Are you confused by all the different running shoes out there? Well, this video is for you. I'm going to break down and explain the different styles, different models and types so you can understand their purpose and what might work best for you. And before we get started, I do want to say go to your local run specialty store like Roadrunner Sports and have them walk you through a true shoe fitting experience. They will be able to measure your foot and tell you what your true running shoe size is. A lot of people are in the wrong shoe size. They just have gone off what they've used in the past and that is not always correct. Everyone's foot is different. There is no such thing as a perfect running shoe. So go in and get properly fitted and understand what type of foot you have and what your true running shoe size actually is. There are three different categories when it comes to support or stability with running shoes. You have neutral running shoes, stability running shoes, and motion control running shoes. Most of the shoes you see in store and online are going to be neutral shoes like the Nike Pegasus 40 I have here in my hand. Now, what is a neutral shoe? Well, a neutral shoe basically means there is no support or guidance to the midsole at all. There's no medial or lateral support built into the shoe itself, and the midsole is rather consistent. Now, neutral shoes come in almost every size and shape imaginable, and they are not all created equal. Some neutral shoes are going to be more stable than others, mainly because some might have a more firm midsole, giving you inherent stability, and some might be very soft, creating some instability. So neutral shoes are very unique, but are the most popular type of running shoe. However, if you want some more support out of the shoe, you might want to take a look at a stability option like the Brooks Levitate 6 GTS. Now, what is a stability running shoe? Well, a stability running shoe features support on the medial side that keeps your foot from rolling inwards or over pronating. Now, pronation is a very natural part of the running gait and not everyone who over pronates necessarily needs a stability running shoe, but it can be a helpful option for those that excess excessively roll inwards or like I said before, over pronate. I also think it's important to note that there is some variation when it comes to stability running shoes as each brand kind of implements it in their own unique way. For example, Brooks uses something called guide rails, which is a wall of foam on the lateral and medial side that keeps your foot going the correct direction with the medial guide rail being a little bit more substantial than that lateral guide rail. And the New Balance on their 860 model uses something called a medial post where the inside foam is going to be a bit more dense, which keeps you from rolling inwards. And A6 has something called 3D space construction where there's some in basically geometric shapes printed inside the midsole that keep your foot from rolling in an incorrect manner. So just keep that in mind when you're taking a look at stability shoes. And last, we have something called motion control running shoes, which are designed for those that excessively over pronate or roll drastically to the inside. Now, this is basically a stability shoe on steroids. The midsole is incredibly firm and stiff. It offers a ton of stability elements and plastic and firm foams and a ton of different technology to make sure it offers a very stable ride, much more so than, again, your classic traditional stability running shoe. So these aren't as common and are going to be a little bit bulky and heavy compared to your traditional running shoes, but it is an option for those that do, again, excessively roll inwards or excessively over pronates. And now that we covered our different support options, we're going to talk about the different kinds of running shoes and their general purpose, starting with road running shoes. Now, within the road running shoe type, we have something called daily trainers, like the shoes we have in front of me. Now, as the name implies, these shoes are meant for your training runs, whether it's long run, short run, fast run, whatever it may be. These shoes come in almost every shape, size, type, and kind of specialty, if you will, as daily training category is a rather broad term. And if you want something super plush and thick, you can go with something like the Nike Invincible. Or if you want a rather versatile option with a lot of cushion, you can go with something like the Hoka Clifton. Or if you want a more minimal shoe, you can get something like the Ultra Escalante with a really wide toe box. It really comes down to what kind of running you're looking to do, or if you just want one shoe to do it all, that's kind of what the daily trainers are for. And I realize that's confusing, but that's where the run specialty store employees or running shoe reviewers come in to help you kind of explain what each shoe is for, or what they're essentially good at or might not be good at. The other type of road running shoe is going to be your race day or super shoe, as some people call it. Now, what makes this a race day shoe or super shoe? Well, there's a couple different properties that most of these shoes have. The first is the midsole foam is going to be one of the lightest and bounciest compounds that a brand has. And the midsole is going to have a trick up its sleeve. It's going to have a full length carbon fiber plate, which stiffens up the shoe, 
helps accentuate that rocker geometry, which helps roll you forward, and allows for excellent energy transfer. And then on top of all of that, these shoes are typically very, very light. This is New Balance Super Comp Elite, and it's New Balance's premier marathon and half marathon racing shoe. These shoes are going to be a bit more expensive, not as durable, but these are going to provide a significant advantage when it comes to race day. The next type of running shoe we are going to talk about are trail runners, and as the name obviously implies, these are meant for running on the trail. However, they are also excellent for hiking or backpacking as they're a much lighter and more nimble option compared to hiking boots, and I actually prefer hiking in trail runners as they're just so much more comfortable. Now, just like daily trainers in the road running shoe category, these come in almost every configuration that you can potentially imagine. Some come with a max stack midsole, some are waterproof with their upper, some have carbon fiber plates in them. There is a complete variety and it's kind of cool to see the trail running category absolutely explode in popularity. So what makes trail running shoes special? Well, it's primarily the outsole. You have much more rubber coverage and the lugs are substantially larger compared to road running shoes. This gives you better durability and enhanced grip in outdoor environments. Another thing is that the uppers typically have a bit more material to them to give you some more security. And some of their models are offered in a, like a waterproof material like Gore-Tex and things like that. Some road running shoes do that, but it's much more prevalent in the trail running space. You also have something called mixed use or kind of hybrid trail running shoes like the Nike Peg 4 or Pegasus 4 where the lugs aren't super aggressive and it means it can go on the road. It's good for gravel paths and can also go on the trail. So like we talked about before, there is a wide variety of trail runners out there. You can also get the type of lug pattern that you want, whether you're doing technical train or if, like we talked about here with the Pegasus, the Pegasus Trail 4, you can also do road as it's a hybrid trail running shoe. So there's a lot of different trail runners out there and these are a great option too if you're looking to hike and you don't want to wear a full boot and you want something a little bit lighter and more comfortable. Now, the last kind of category I want to talk about is gym and cross training shoes. Now, I recognize this is not a dedicated running shoe, but it is designed to be run in, especially if you're doing CrossFit, HIIT classes, and or just general workouts at the gym. It also brings up another very important point. You shouldn't be doing lower body workouts in your running shoes, or at least lower body lifts. And a big reason for that is they ruin your running shoes. The midsole foam has a very limited life and if you're doing heavy lifts it degrades that midsole foam and they're really just not the best option for weightlifting. So save your running shoes and switch to something like a cross training shoe. And like every other category that we talked about today, cross training shoes also have a ton of variety and kind of dial it into exactly what you like. But I think the Reebok Nano X3, the shoe I'm holding here, does a good job of kind of highlighting some of the key features that a lot of these shoes have. The first thing and probably the most important is the midsole is going to be on the firmer side of things, giving you a very stable base for lifting heavy weights or doing any jump cuts, jump exercises, or anything like that. The upper is also much more robust. It keeps your foot very connected to the platform and allows for lateral side to side cuts and make sure that your foot isn't going anywhere. And also it has much more support through the midfoot and heel area. It's really only supposed to kind of bend towards the toe as this allows you much more stability while lifting or performing those explosive movements. I hope you found this video helpful. This is a very high level, very basic overview of all the different kinds of shoe options available for your running and exercise needs. As always, I recommend you get into your local Roadrunner Sports or Run Specialty Store so they can fit you and size you properly and walk you through all the different options because there are a ton.